Today I'm going to tell you all about the Oticon More One rechargeable hearing aid and why if you're in the market for a premium hearing instrument this absolutely has to be on your shortlist. Coming next. Hi, my name is Matthew Pearson from Zone One Hearing in London and over the last 16 years I've had the pleasure and privilege of helping people from all over the world hear better. So if you'd like to learn all about hearing aids, accessories, assistive devices, apps and all that kind of thing, please remember to like, to share, to comment, to subscribe and press the bell for notifications so you hear when our latest videos are released. So Oticon have been around for over a hundred years and they are a very famous Danish hearing aid manufacturer. Their latest hearing aid is the Oticon More One hearing aid and currently it's available in a rechargeable receiver in the ear canal format. Brain hearing is a key part of Oticon's hearing philosophy and the whole thinking behind that is traditional hearing aids rather than provide a full signal to the brain to create a, a strong neural code, classify speech as good but other sounds as bad and try and move away from them. So with Oticon, what they were able to do first with the open model is give the brain access to the full soundscape and allow the user to decide what is important and what to focus on. So rather than having, if you like, blinkers on, giving you access to the full soundscape and then you simply pick what you think is the priority. So with regard to the hearing aid industry, the approach historically is to employ microphones that are directional. So the less is more approach to understanding speech. However, new research shows that more is more. So the brain needs access to the full soundscape. So the 360 degree uh, concept that Oticon uses to create that good neural code to give the brain what it needs to maximize hearing. So the foundation to any great hearing aid is its chip. So in a way you could compare this to an engine in a car. So the first thing to make note of is the 154 million transistors on the chip which is more than double the Velux S chip which it replaces from its previous generation Open S model. Compared to the Velux S chip, the new Polaris chip has eight times the solid state memory and twice the computational power. The Polaris chip also has twice the working memory and also has 50% more adjustment bands. So this can lead to a more personalized and highly adjustable fit for our patients. And we can use that with the new um, automatic REM facility or real ear measurement facility, meaning that real ear measurements are accessible by a much wider variety of the audiology community to give you the most precise and personalized fit of your hearing aids. Power for this amazing chip is supplied by a lithium ion battery. And the advantage to this is you're not going to get caught out by the hearing aids running out at the most inopportune time. If you've got great battery admin, you simply take the aids off, pop them in the charger, which should be next to your bed. And when you take them out, ready to put them in in the morning, then the website for Oticon shows you can get up to 24 hours of use without streaming. And with five hours of streaming, you can still get up to 18 hours of use from the batteries. So for most people, this should be absolutely adequate. And on the previous generation Open S models, we had zero people come back claiming that the AIDS hadn't gone through the day. In fact, most had quite a significant amount of spare capacity left at the end of the day when they'd finished using them. So what does this fantastically advanced chip allow Oticon to do? So the main hero feature if you like of this hearing aid what's different to what's gone before it is the deep neural network so think of a deep neural network as the brain of the hearing aid it starts off empty just like a child's brain effectively there's no information in there but over a period of time it's trained to its full capacity so this was trained using a spherical 
microphone not been used before in the industry with 32 individual microphones evenly spaced around it this was then taken out into the world to record 12 million different sound scenes yes 12 million that's quite a lot and the idea with it is the hearing aids now should be able to recognize any kind of sound you will encounter in the world and accurately play it to you just how it should be how does this differ from previous generations of hearing aids? So hearing aids traditionally work on algorithms. So an algorithm is a mathematical equation, so a theory developed by an engineer. So those are the limitations of the hearing aids. So information comes in and then it's adjusted based on theoretical models. This takes all that information that we've used historically with hearing aids, throws it out of the window, and uses the brain of the hearing aid to present the sound to you exactly as it should be. And this can be further fine-tuned within the audiologist software to take into account the level of difficulty a patient experiences in different environments, giving them a fully tailored solution. Soft Speech Booster is the next feature I want to talk to you about. So soft speech is often inaudible to hearing impaired people. So this feature makes soft sounds, including soft speech, audible and can actually be tailored and fine-tuned to the individual's requirements by playing sound files and asking questions about their unique perception of sound. And soft Sound Booster boosts the soft sounds, including soft speech, that would otherwise be inaudible without the end user having to resort to increasing the volume of their hearing aids. Next we have the More Sound Booster. This is a facility within the Oticon On app that you can simply slide over and what it will do is in simple environments will give up to four decibels of noise reduction so this could be useful if for example you're getting tired towards the end of the day or if you're in a meeting and maybe you're being disturbed by the sound of say an air conditioning unit. So we were very privileged to get hold of the Oticon More One hearing aids towards the back end of 2020 and as a result um, of the you know the enthusiasm within the hearing impaired community it's actually been our fastest selling product ever and i've been involved in the industry for over 16 years now so what have people been saying about it well it, you know it sounds a bit strange but people have just been saying i'm just hearing more and that's been said to me so many times that um well it must be true. So people genuinely feel that they're hearing more sound, they're hearing differently, they're hearing better than they have done historically, and you know people are hearing more clearly. So uh, certainly if you are in the market for a premium hearing instrument, I always advise going to someone who is fully independent, but definitely uh, you want to test this device. Next, I'd like to talk to you about the facility called Speech Rescue. Speech Rescue is a system designed to make otherwise inaudible high frequency information available to hearing impaired individuals in the mid frequency area. So once the sound is cleaned of any noise, that speech information is translated down to a lower frequency area. So the person's brain has access to the full frequency full spectrum of speech sounds, but in their usable hearing area. Next is tinnitus sound support. So one of the easiest ways to access this is through the Oticon On app. So if you are someone who experiences tinnitus and wants to reduce the perception of that, the first thing I would say is just by using your prescription being processed and correctly set up by your audiologist through these hearing aids, you should notice a reduction in the sound that you experience because you've got access to this um, higher degree of sound than you would through a traditional hearing aid which minimizes and narrows down the, the soundscape. Now, if you still find that you experience tinnitus at a level that is uh, too much for you, there are some additional sounds that you can use, such as white noise, pink noise, and my personal favourite, Ocean Sound 3, which I've used with many of my patients and use myself, and to the point where when I use that, I've actually turned around to look to see where the sound's coming from. I've become that comfortable with it, maybe because I was brought up 12 doors from the beach. But anyway, it's just a much more pleasant sound, in my opinion, than white noise, which is just slightly less annoying than tinnitus, but you know, just a personal view. So 
you know, my go-to device if I'm treating a patient with tinnitus. And just a couple of facts sort of off the top of my head, 90% of people who have tinnitus also have hearing loss. So let's just say we were unable to help with the tinnitus. Guess what, as a side benefit, you've helped with the hearing loss. But about 60% of patients who try a hearing instrument just with the amplification alone will notice either the tinnitus is gone while they wear an aid or a significant reduction where it's livable. Another 20%, the masking noise I've mentioned, the, the sound therapy will help. And like I say, maybe a remaining 20%, it won't reduce, but a side benefit of helping the hearing. So when your doctor maybe says to you, there's nothing you can do to help with tinnitus, take an antidepressant or get over it, there are answers. So, you know, my advice would be, give them a try. What have you got to lose? The hearing aids come in eight stylish colours, uh, one of them being a light pink colour, so you can, you can guess um, which seven we've prescribed up to now and which one we're still waiting for a patient for. Um, but if you know if you like that kind of colour, please you know be happy to see you and get you fitted up with those, and I'm sure that'd be a nice photo opportunity because I think it looks rather fetching. But we've literally um, fitted every single colour in this portfolio except the pink and all look really fantastic. And you can further supplement how well these aids look by using Vanish Hide My Hearing Aid. So we're currently in the process with the people we fitted of matching skin tones and having those wires done for them to make them look even better than they do now. Unfortunately, sometimes when you upgrade hearing aids from a previous model, the accessories are no longer compatible and you need to replace the whole range. Now, fortunately, with the More One, users of the Open and Open S hearing aids are going to be happy to learn that their remote control, their app, their TV streamer, their remote mic, the, the Connect Clip, and the Edu mic are all compatible with the More One. So a fantastic range of accessories, and um, plan on doing a little bit more content about them in more detail later. But I will pop a link up there for the Connect Clip if you want to learn more about that. So what are the benefits of using this hearing aid? So it's always good to make a comparison. People will say, I've got the previous generation, is it worth me upgrading to the new one? Now, based on the numbers of people we've already upgraded from the Open S, I would certainly say it is, but just to put a, a little bit more meat on the bone, the brain will be given access to 30% more sound by the Oticon More One compared to the Oticon S1 hearing aid and speech understanding is increased by 15%, which is quite significant. The spatial sound feature allows the interaural differences between the ears to be maintained through NFMI, meaning you get a richer, fuller sound experience and you're able to precisely locate the direction of sounds. And this has certainly been my experience when I've compared it with competitor models with patients who've tried and rejected hearing aids from several other manufacturers. And finally, worth mentioning, um, these are an MFI, so made for iPhone, and an Asher equipped, so made for Android hearing aid. So what does that mean in practical terms? So if you've got an iPhone, if somebody calls you and your phone's been connected to the hearing aids, when you take the call, rather than having to maybe take the hearing aid off and put it next to the ear as normal and think wherever I put my hearing aid or put it above the ear and then the other person can't hear you. The sound is simply streamed through the hearing aid through your prescription so you can hear the person clearly in both ears. You can also use the phone to turn the hearing aids up and down. You can use the phone as a remote microphone and now a new facility within the Oticon On app is if sound is streaming through through the mic or if you're watching content like a YouTube video from someone hearing, you can change the frequency response in a three band equalizer. So the same facilities are available on a select number of Android phones apart from the, uh, the microphone facility. So why is it select hearing aid or select phones rather than an entire range? Well, the difference is there are 30,000 plus Android phones. So my phone I've got over in the corner now, my OnePlus Nord, looks like it's got everything that it needs to connect. However, it's something that the manufacturer has not switched on within the software. But my older Pixel 3a XL from Google 
that one will connect. So it's important if you're an Android user before you or considering getting a new Android phone, before you go ahead, I would just check the compatibility list and then that way you can get something that's going to give you that full more one experience when you get your new phone. As always, any hearing instrument is only ever as good as the information it contains. So make sure you look out for a high quality provider who's going to give you a fully comprehensive assessment, including Quixin, which I'll link up there what Quixin is. Um, also that the hearing aids are programmed using real ear measurements because if we look at a real ear measurement, let's think of the opposite. The opposite of a real ear measurement would be an average ear estimate. So ordinarily, what the computer will do is make an estimate based on a dummy. So if you have two people with exactly the same hearing loss on paper, the way the hearing aid will be configured is exactly the same. However, one may have very large ears, one have, may have very small. This person's gonna be under amplified and not hear correctly. This person's gonna be over amplified and that can also uh, you know, deliver a bad experience. So just make sure the correct information is taken when you're tested so the right solution is provided and also make sure the hearing aids are properly set up to deliver the best possible performance. Because as I say, a hearing aid, doesn't matter how amazing it is, if it's got the wrong information in it, it won't perform to its potential. So this is Matthew from Zone One Hearing. Thank you very much for watching. And we'd really appreciate if you'd like, share, comment, subscribe, and press the bell for notifications. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you very much.